This is the FlashForge AD5X, a core XY printer with multi-material capabilities, all for a lower price than its competitors. But does that lower price mean lower quality? Let's find out. Today, I'm gonna to be unboxing this printer, setting it up, doing some test prints, all before giving my initial thoughts. I'm really excited for this one, so let's get right to it. Let's open it up. So right on top, looks like we have some instructions. I'll just put that to the side for now. Remove some thick foam. And that's the printer right there. And I'm just gonna lift it right up and out. That was one of the quickest removal of boxes I've ever done. That only took a couple seconds. So let's take a look at what we have in here. So looks like we have a small bag with some tools. Looks like the usual stuff you'd find, some cutters, screwdrivers, screws, some sort of connector. It looks like a cleaner for when you get clogs. Let's go see what else we have. Got our power cord. So the instructions say to first remove this piece here so we can remove this screen and secure it on. I think that's just to keep the screen from breaking during transportation. Now with that out of the way, the screen is free to come out. To put the screen on, it's just gonna slide in place just like that. And now we can remove the foam back here. Pull the extruder assembly back. And now we can lift out this foam section here. So we have a few parts here. These look like part of what they call their IFS system. That is their multicolor, multi-material system. So let's take a look. It's a little different than some of the other ones I've used, but also familiar in other ways. So these look like the spool holders. This is fairly heavy. I feel like this has some motors in it. it looks like it runs the filament through it. And, oh, those are just some filament samples. And our PTFE tubes with a splitter on it. Not sure exactly what this is, but we will figure that out in the instructions. And I think we can now remove this next piece of foam. So next we're gonna install this mounting bracket. This is going to attach the IFS module to it. And it's just gonna be two screws. Now we can attach the IFS module. So these tubes are gonna be pointing down, this arrow pointing the direction. So we're going to put it just like this and twist it down. Now we connect the PTFE tubes. So we're gonna connect the one into the extruder here. So push that down in, just like that. And now connect the tubes on top and it doesn't matter which tube goes where for this. And then we're also going to connect this guide cable on here. Just like that. Now we can connect the IFS cable. So into the module there and then into the back of the printer here. And there's going to be a little cable guide that screws on here. So now we're going to attach these spool holders and they're all nicely numbered, one to four. And then before we can turn the printer on, we just have to remove three screws from the bed. So first one's here. And the last thing we do here is just plug it in and power it on.
So first up, we have the Benchy, of course, and there's not too much to say about Benchies these days, but this one actually struck me a little bit. The detail on the back is very good. Normally, you can barely see the letters here, but in this case, it's pretty visible. And the model, of course, was multi-material test. I have four different colors here, and it all printed very well. There was no issues with it changing. It changes relatively quick, and all in all, a very good multicolor bench. One thing with these multicolor prints is they do have a prime tower. Now this is a little tower that prints next to the model, and this is to get the nozzle ready for the next layer. So you're not having little gaps in your model due to low pressure in the nozzle. So you might know multicolor printing is a little bit wasteful, and this is just one of those things that you have to go with in order to get these multicolor prints for now. Then next up, we have our little multicolor koi fish here. Now where this Benchy had to shift only a few times per print, with this koi, you had to do a lot more color changes, sometimes multiple per layer. So it does produce a bit more waste doing that, but the printer did a really good job with this. The detail looks exceptional. The colors all look very good. There was no bleeding or anything. Overall, a really good print. The flexibility is really good in this model. This was one that was already loaded up on the printer, but it printed very nicely. I don't have any criticisms with this in terms of the material change or the color bleed or quality. This thing turned out really nicely. Next up, I printed some TPU. Now this is actually a multi-material print. I'll talk a little bit more about the IFS system after, but I wanted to note that you can print TPU in multi-material. So what I did here, this was kind of just a test, really an experiment for myself and for the machine. I wanted to see if I could print TPU and PLA at the same time. So what I did, if you've printed TPU before, you know it can really stick kind of too well to these beds sometimes. Often you want to put glue down so you can get it off after. But I wanted to print a little raft on the bottom because I know TPU and PLA don't stick together too well. It sticks well enough to hold the print down but still allows you to remove it afterwards. So I just printed this simple model. It's a little cable management system and it printed really well. It didn't come off at all. The bottom layers are a little rough. It's not the best here, but this was really an experiment to see if it would print multi-material, not so much whether my specific idea was practical or not. But it did a really good job changing it. It didn't jam up. That's one thing, even some of the more expensive machines, some of the older multi-material systems don't work all that well with TPU. It's a little too soft and it can jam up the system. This one's really nice. It's on the side and I was able to feed it with no issues at all. And the print quality on this TPU is actually really good. It's very strong. The layers adhered very well. Tiniest little bit of stringing could be a little bit wet, the filament, but the quality turned out really nice regardless. Next up here, we have a TIE Fighter. Now this is just a single material PLA print. I wanted to print something a little bit taller, something that involves some supports, and it printed really well with those supports. They came off pretty easily, as easily as PLA on PLA supports go. And the quality throughout the print, through the whole height of it, was really good. These Core XY printers are really good about not changing the quality as the height increases. Whereas some of the cheaper bed slinger type printers can lose quality as the height goes up. So another very good print here. And I have one final print here. Now this looks like a multicolor print, but it is actually a few prints all assembled together. I wanted a print with a bit of variety to it. You know, some nice detailed parts, some overhangs, and just a variety of things to test out this printer. And this printed really good. It did a good job with all the issues. The overhangs were great, bridging, no stringing on the bridging part here. The details on these shingles all look very nice. Just a really good print. Now let's talk about the multicolor system again a little bit here, or the IFS system. I really like this design. It is very compact. You know, some other designs, you either have to have it on top or next to it, almost takes up the space of like two printers. This is a great compact design, really efficient use of space. And it seems to also work very well beyond that. It's such a short distance for the tubes to go that it doesn't cause too much friction with the prints. I imagine that is gonna help with print quality. It definitely seems to help with loading up TPU. It's not jamming it up or causing too much friction. I think it is a great design. I would like to see this on more printers and I really respect them for going this direction. Now let's talk about the features a bit on this printer or lack of features you might say. Now this printer comes in at a very low price point, especially compared to its competitors for a multicolor printer like this. You might notice 
Obviously it's missing sides. It's not completely enclosed. And another thing is it doesn't have a built-in camera. Now, the nice thing is you can add these on. They do have these available for sale. If you wanna make this an enclosed printer, you wanna, you wanna add a camera on, you can do that. But it's great that you can have the option of getting this printer at a low cost if you don't really want those things. Maybe you just want a really good multicolored printer without all the fancy extras. And this would be a great one to go with. And another simple feature I like is this big grippy part on the bed. And the way the bed is designed makes it really easy to put the build plate back on the first time every time. Another thing to note is the rigidity of this frame. It feels very strong. It doesn't feel like it's flexing at all while it's printing. There's lots of support beams going across. It feels very strong in the corners. So you know you're not getting any flex and anything that can mess up your print. And it is a bit of a smaller printer, so that also contributes to making this feel very solid. So overall, I think the FlashForge ADX5 is a great little printer with multicolor capabilities. And it comes in at such a low price, it's hard to ignore. And I think this will definitely eat into the sales of some other companies that are kind of dominating the field right now. If you want a well-built printer from a good brand with multicolor capabilities, all for a low price, I think this is the one to go with. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next time.